We're All recording. right. Welcome to I'm Virtually Yours with Aliza Benchalom, moderated by moi. Um, Aliza Benchalom is a, an international speaker, the most incredible dating coach, and my good friend. Um, I might be a little biased, but seriously, she's the best dating coach, and I forgot my ring at home, <laughs> but normally I have a wedding ring there, and that only happened because of Aliza. So, like I said, a little bit biased, but she's awesome. What? Engagement ring, not your wedding yeah. ring. What did I say? Wedding ring. Okay, wedding ring. <laughs> <laughs> she's already there, everybody. She's already uh, married in her mind. <laughs> I meant engagement ring. Um, Aliza, are you wearing um, headphones? I have a microphone. Is it not I loud have, I hear an echo. No, your mic is fine, but I hear an echo of me. And I feel like everyone might also be hearing an echo of me from you. I do not hear an echo on my end. Dahlia says someone's adorable, but I don't know if it's me or you. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to assume it's both of us. It's you. Nobody's here. They're not hearing an echo. <laughs> We're both okay, adorable. great. You awesome. Um, so Wait, I'm Sarah. Yup, an echo. Devora says there's an echo. Um, so either put in earbuds or I don't know. Let's keep going. If it becomes an issue, okay. then let us know. Um, and I'm Sarah Kupfer. I am Fit Jewess, and Aliza has made me into marketing Jewess. So in addition to the work that I do, I also work for Aliza. And I get to have a lot of fun and come on and moderate these um, webinars. So I'm going to let Aliza tell you, introduce um, tonight's topic and tell you what we're going to be doing. And as far as I believe we have, once she gets through um, her content, we're going to open it up to Q&A, anything um, dating related. Quick reminder, at the bottom, so I don't know where your chat screen is. Wherever you're chatting, that's your chat screen. If you have a question now or later, please put it in the Q&A box because it'll likely get lost in the chat and I'm gonna try my best to keep track of the questions, but I need them to be in the Q&A box, not in the chat box. And I'll remind you again um, if you forget, but please put your questions in the Q&A box. All right, Aliza, the floor is all yours. The screen is okay. all yours. Welcome everybody. We are really glad that you are here. I got a bunch of text messages today. Everybody's like, oh, I'm so excited. Wait, what's the link? What's the login? And how can I get more information? I want to make sure I'm on at the right time. And so we are so excited that you're here with us. I am Elise Benchalam. I work as a dating and relationship coach. I work with singles who are motivated to get over the hurdles and under the chuppah. And I've been doing this for oof, over a decade, um, the last 12 plus years. And I love the work that I do. A lot of people tell me, they're like, isn't it so depressing? Singles and it's so hard. And so I was like, it's not depressing. People get engaged. They get married. This happens. It's very exciting. I love the work that I do. I get wedding invitations and, you know, mazel tov messages and photos and it happens. That's what happens. People search for their soulmate and they find them. Sometimes it happens quickly and sometimes it doesn't. My specialty happens to be working with um, older singles and people that are really focused on making something happen right now. Tonight, we are hyper-focusing on three ways to build a meaningful connection and specifically having in mind that we are virtual right now. So how do you make somebody virtually yours without ever actually meeting them? Most of my work when I'm working with clients is over the phone. Uh, sometimes it's video like this, but often it's over the phone and I work with people from around the world. So anywhere, you know, I'm in Philly, I've got a lot of clients in New York, California, all over the States, Canada, Mexico, Australia, London, Israel, wherever you are, I work with people everywhere and building a connection virtually is something that I've actually been doing for many years. And I want to tell you about my greatest teacher. My greatest teacher in connection was my grandmother. And I realized later that my mother also embodied a lot of these traits. And I remember she came to my house once. She came on Shabbos and she stayed over. And we had a new guest with us, somebody that we didn't know very well. And, you know, it's always, I try to make people comfortable, but, you know, I don't know you and you don't know me. And how do we get to really know each other? And I watched her and she sits down on the sofa and you know, she's a grandma so she can get away with this. She's like, hi love, how are you? Right? Immediately, he's already, he's already like, will you be my grandma? Like, I love you. Like, hi love. Like he was, he just felt so welcomed and so warm. And, um, and then she just 
you know, got to know him. She started schmoozing with him, you know, where you're from and what you do. And, oh, that's so lovely. And she would compliment him and, well, tell me about this and tell me about that. Oh, and what are you doing here? And how do you know them? And by the end of Shabbos, he looked at me and he's like, I want her to be my grandmother. It's like, I love her. She, she just, she's so wonderful from one Shabbos. So I started to watch what she did and I would watch what my mom did and I would learn from them. And, and then I started to practice it. And everybody now who knows me, they're like, oh, you were always friendly and you were always outgoing. And you're, and I was like, no, I was painfully shy. It was very hard in the beginning. I don't think I, I knew this. I, yes, you do. And every time I tell you, you're really? like, I don't believe it. <laughs> Nobody believes it. So <sighs> if I know you and you're my friend, I'm a chatterbox and we can talk and we can connect. If I don't know you, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to get to know you or I'm hesitant or I don't know how to make you feel comfortable. And, and I had to learn how to do it. So everything that I'm telling you is not something that came very naturally to me. All of the things that we're going to talk about tonight are things that I learned and things that I practiced intentionally because my goal was to build a connection. Because if I could build a connection with my clients and the people that I work with, then I could help them the most. They'll know me. I'll know them. They'll trust me. I'll understand them. We'll get each other. We'll get on the same wavelength. And then there's this synchronized movement that starts to happen between us and things start to shift. So I want to move through three different things that you can do to connect virtually. And I'm not just talking about hello and how are you and an initial thing. This is either, you know, three, four dates in, five dates in, you're, you're getting into it, or it could be a relationship that started before COVID-19 and is developing into a virtual relationship or through a virtual relationship now, and you're trying to figure out how to take it to the next level. So this isn't just get to know you. Get to know you, you're on your own, or watch the other webinars that we did. There's recordings. You can find them on marriagemindedmentor.com. They're there for you. But this is really about I'm gonna how to interrupt for a second. I'm just going to finish that sentence. On the events page, if you go to the events page, even the webinars that are already passed, if you go to click the link, the, the, the webinars are available for download. Back to you. Thank you. You can put it in the chat box. Um, but I'm sure everybody, you, fa you found me so far, so you'll know where to find me again. Okay, so three ways to build a kitchen. So I brought notes. Um, they're on my phone, and I also have handwritten notes. So num way number one that I really want to talk about, hold on, I'm going to pull up my notes right here, is what I call curiosity connects. Okay. So a lot of people talk about, and I do as well, open-ended questions, getting to know somebody, not yes or no questions, not things that people can answer with a one word answer, but they talk about generically questions, but what's at the root of a question? Because I'm not talking about questions right now. If you ask a question, but you're not actually curious about the person that you're talking to, just asking a question to keep the conversation going, or you're asking a question because you want to know the answer to something, if you're searching for something specific, that's asking with a purpose. When you ask just because you're curious, not to have an answer, but curiosity to connect. If I'm curious about you because I want to connect with you, because I want to get to know you, because I want to build something, it's a different kind of question and it's a different level. We go from surf surface level to depth. So I want to move through a, through, a, through a few points here. Um, number one, when you're asking out of curiosity for connection, you're sincerely asking because I am genu genuinely interested in getting to know you, in getting to understand you, and in getting to connect with you. And even if I don't know if you're my person, this is where it gets a little tricky and I do a lot of coaching around this. If I don't know if you're my person, I don't want to build too much of a connection because maybe you'll really connect to me and then I don't really want to connect to you and then I don't want to continue the relationship and it makes it difficult and I don't want to lead you on. There's a lot of good reasons why we don't want to do certain things. But the truth is, if we don't build a genuine connection, we'll never know if it's the right connection. And yes, somebody might get hurt. And yes, you might be more interested or they might be more interested and you won't be on the same page. That's totally normal in dating and I expect that to happen. 
but you've got to connect genuinely. And it's just because you're curious about them because it's a human being that's across from you. And it's not because you need to know certain answers to check off certain boxes so that you know you're right for me, you're not right for me. We're just having a conversation because I just want to get to know you and I want to connect with you right now in this moment. And I'm not judging anything. I'm not making a decision. I'm not asking you something because I'm going to make a decision. And based on your answer, I'm going to say yes or no to you. I'm just asking because I want to deepen and build our connection. So you hear me repeating this over and over again, and I'm stressing the difference. I really want you to know what the, the difference between asking a question is, between getting to know somebody, and between being curious about who somebody is. So how do you do that? You have to look at them or virtually look at them and find something that you're curious about them. It can be physically you want to compliment them on something and you want to talk about their, their taste and their style and get into it. And if somebody's really a shopper and it's a thing, you know, and you want to talk about your favorite brands, it can trickle into something more meaningful because you're curious about it and you want to know where those things came from. They could end up telling you, you know, my you know, father used to go take me to this store. And so it's not really about the store and it's not really about the brand. It's about the memory that I had when I went with my father, right? Because of curiosity, you get to that. If you're just checking off boxes, oh, they like brand names and they're into this. Oh, they must be a money person. Oh, you know what? Forget it. They're not for me. You miss the whole point of their story. So go for the curiosity and ask really great questions to deepen the relationship. Um, okay, hold on. Doo -doo -doo. We did genuinely asking. Um, okay, here's another piece of it. I love this. Do not ask a question to show I'm paying attention or to, you're not asking a question. You're not curious about them. You don't want to, you don't want to, you're not trying to show anything about you as you're getting to know them, except for the fact that I want to get to know you. I'm curious about you. I want to connect with you. Your whole motivation be behind everything, you don't exist in this picture. Like you're, you're blurred out. They become so clear. It's them that you want to come to the surface. It's them that you want to draw out. And that's a really important part of the process. We also don't want to lead anybody to any answers. So we're not curious and, and we're not asking questions or connecting with them in a certain way to be like, well, I like this, so you like this right? You know, like, we're not going to make imaginary lines here. Just because your brain needs things to be in sync for you to feel connected. We're really just getting to know somebody, connecting, and learning about them at a deeper level, because that builds a relationship. Okay? So that is, that is the first step, curiosity connects. Okay? Not first step, but the first way. Good. Way number two, we're ready? Ready, love it. Okay. Way number two is bring out somebody's best. So it's so funny because on many of my coaching calls, we really focus on bringing out our best, putting our best foot forward, whether it's making sure we're dressed right, we've got our smile on, we've got what to say, we're prepared in our minds, we're ready to go, we're well-rested, well-fed, right? We're, everything's all together. Really what I want you to do is to bring out somebody else's best. So when you're not focused on how you're presenting and all about you, and you're focused on somebody else, you're having a different type of a conversation. They say something and, and you go, wow, that's a really deep insight, right? Because it's not about you. It's about you actually listen to them. They said something intriguing and you notice that there was some insight and you comment on that. That's an important part of building the relationship because you're bringing out their best. You're complimenting them on what you, what, they, what you see in them, and that builds a connection. And so we need to constantly do that. So I'm going to give you an example. I was once working with somebody, and the couple was having a difficult time. They were having some pretty difficult conversations and neither side was too happy with where they were in the relationship. They were just kind of like bickering. It was like that bickering banter back and forth where they just couldn't get through it. And we started to talk about what was happening. And I, I asked them to use this, bring out your best 
technique. And I said, can you acknowledge whatever this other person is going through, even though you guys are going through this difficult time, can you acknowledge something that they're doing well now or right now or something like, wow, this is, that, this is difficult between us. You know what, what you just said, I, like, I really liked the way you said that. It made me feel better. It made me feel calmer. It made me feel safe with you. Identify something that shows how, how they're making you feel. And that draws out somebody's best. You're highlighting what they're doing right. You're highlighting something good. Not a fake compliment, not an insincere word that, that is meaningless, but something that actually acknowledges who they are and what they're doing brings out their best. And when you bring out the best in somebody, they want to be around you. And they want to do the same for you. They want to bring out the best in you. So you bring out the best in them, they bring out the best in you. Now, of course, we're also always working to bring out our own best, but it doesn't always happen. It's a, you know, we can't always work on ourselves. So you kind of have to flip flop back and forth between like putting my best foot forward. Okay, wait, don't hyper focus on me. Wait, wait, wait. How can I bring out their best? And if you can juggle that vision between the me and the you and the me and the you, you get to a place of deepening and strengthening the relationship because I'm not hyper-focused on how I'm going to come off on this call. I'm actually hyper-focused on how I make you feel. Okay? So that's number two. Let me see if I had any other points that I, that I missed there. I think I drew it all. Um, mm -mm -mm. Yeah, great. That's two. Point number three. A Under quick, quick interruption before you get to point number yeah. three. Yep, Just yep. a quick reminder, because I saw a couple people putting questions in the chat box. It's very likely going to get lost. So please copy and paste your question into the Q&A box. Um, and there were also a couple questions that came in um, that I already answered. So if you look at the Q&A box, you have open questions, and then we have answered questions. Feel free to check the answered questions to get um, to see any answers that were answered by my fingers. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, number three is understanding and acceptance of who somebody is. Okay, let me see here. Okay, so it goes like this. I know who you are. Maybe I like who you are to a degree. I don't like who you are. There's some things I like more than others. But it's different if I accept who you are. I don't actually have to like everything about you. I don't. I've got, you know, a husband, children, parents, family members, right? I don't like everything about them. Sorry, newsflash. <laughs> I love them. I really, really love them. I won't tell, I promise. I won't tell. <laughs> they won't watch the webinar, don't worry. <laughs> um, but I don't like everything about them. I love them and I accept who they are and I understand who they are. I don't have to like everything about them. I can acknowledge things. I can bring out their best. But if I understand who you are, whether I like it or I don't, that's my judgment. Who cares about that? I can still accept you as a person. I can still understand you. I can still connect to you. And, and I have to tell you, for me, there is no greater pleasure in the world than feeling understood and accepted. When, when I know that somebody understands me, if I try to explain something and, and somebody's arguing back and forth, I'm like, no, no, like, let, me, let me explain this. I want, I want you to understand what I'm trying to say. Do you get my point? Do you get it? Do you, like, do you get me? Because it's not my point that I care about. I want to know that you actually get me. If you get me, you get my thinking. You get my heart. You get my feelings. You know me. And if you know me, even if I do something that you don't like, but you know me, you know, my, you know what's behind you know, my intention that's behind everything, then you're not going to misunderstand who I am. And you can accept who I am because even if you don't like something that I do, you can still accept me because you really actually know me. And we're talking, when we're talking about deepening a relationship, we have to get over this. I like this. I don't like this. I have my list. I know what my values are. I know what the traits are that work for me. I know what doesn't work for me. This really irritates me. This doesn't. Yes, yes, yes. You should have traits that you value that you are in sync with, 100%. There's going to be things that bother you about the person that you're with. If there is nothing that bothers you about the person that you are with, turn around and run. Don't walk. 
get out. It's not a good relationship. You are not seeing clearly. There are always things that bother us about other people. Totally, totally normal. And we can completely accept and understand who people are and show them that. And you can say, when somebody's sharing something with you, you can say, wow, you know, that's an, it's a really interesting point. I, I hear what you're saying and I get it and I'm not on the same page with you, but, but, like, but like I understand your thinking and I see why that's your reasoning. And I don't need us to agree, right? We can agree to disagree. We can discuss it. It can be like one of our little, you know, sticky banter points that we schmooze about over the course of time. But I want you to know that I get you and I understand you. And that, Mm, that is like music to my ears. One of the most frustrating things that happens in a relationship is when somebody comes to me and they're like, Aliza, but they don't get me. I don't actually think they even know me. Now, of course they know you. They know the details. They know where you live. They know what you do. They know who you're related to. That They know things about you, but they don't actually know you. And so the next step to deepening a relationship, and this can be done virtually, is to understand and accept somebody. So I want to add a few tips just about how to create an environment online where you can connect to somebody at a deeper level. Because I gave you the tools and the skills that you'll need to deepen the relationship, but I want to give you a few things about a technical success. So one is if you are on um, a video call like this, so you see that I'm not holding a phone, it's my, my screen is not moving around and jiggling, right? It's set up, it's propped up, I have it at a good angle, you know, you have your face somewhere in the middle of the screen, the, the camera's not looking up at you or down at you. I also, somebody's like, oh, you have to get one of those ring lights so that it can like illuminate your face. So I don't have that because I didn't buy that, but I have a Shabbos lamp and it's sitting here. If I turn it like this, does that look good? No, that's horrible. You're too shiny. Okay, too shiny. If I turn it like this, can you see me? No, shadowy. I'm actually shadowy and really dull. So I, I spent time to figure out just the right angle. Oh, there we go, right? There's just enough light. It's illuminated on my face. You don't have to buy anything fancy, but you do have to make sure that visually your setting looks good because people are superficial and judge on those things. And it's hard to focus on getting to know you on the inside when the outside of you is like lopsided upside down, jiggling back and forth. And I'm looking up your nose half the time. It's just irritating. <laughs> so that's one thing. Number two is if you're not on a video and you're on a phone and you're thinking like, oh, Lisa, I can't connect over the phone. My husband, by the way, not a phone guy, like beyond not a phone guy. Our very first phone call before our first date, because um, we, we kind of knew each other from the community. It was a long story. But anyway, he was like, how are you doing? Good. <laughs> it was like this very awkward conversation. It's only because I knew him that we got through that to the next step. But if if you have a hard time on the phone, what I want you to do is find a room, close the lights, dim the lights, something, make it a little bit dark and, and sort of like a, a night romantic light setting. If you're in a chair, prop your feet up or, you know, like just get yourself into a comfortable position because when your body is physically in a comfortable position, your brain and your heart are also going to be in a comfortable position. You're going to be much more likely to be open to be able to have a more connected conversation. And make sure if you're talking for a long time that you have water beside you so that you don't get really dry and just end up not, not so comfortable, but just like technical success, people. We need to have all the things in the right places. Um, and don't worry about other people if they're home or whatever, they knock on the door like, uh, okay, forget about the, the random distractions, that normal things are going to happen like that. The guy next door is going to be mowing the lawn. The siren is going to be going on down the street. Somebody's going to be banging on the door and like, come on, I need you. We don't care about those things. That you can't control. We're not dealing with anything that's outside of your control. I'm only talking about things that are within your control to put yourself in a position where you're relaxed, get your glass of wine, sip your martini, you know, your quarantini or whatever they're calling it. And, and oh my enjoy. gosh, I love that. Right? Yeah, enjoy. I think I heard it a while ago, but oh, good. We need to have a quarantini. Yeah. And enjoy your conversation. And if it takes you a little bit to loosen up, so definitely drink your quarantini because just one. Yeah, yeah, not more than one. We need you to kind of loosen up. And if you're the type of person that would normally have a drink on a date, 
then you should have a drink on your virtual dates also and put yourself in a comfortable mood and a comfortable mindset in these unusual, awkward circumstances. And I'll tell you, a lot of people are skeptical um, in terms of, you know, developing a relationship over the phone or online. Again, the majority of my work with my clients is over the phone or online. It's not in person. This, this whole thing did not change how I work with people. It changed my events, which became virtual. But in terms of my life, I normally work with clients like this and I build relationships like this. I get sometimes wedding invitations from people who I've never met in person because we just didn't have that opportunity. They were halfway across the world or in another state or country. So it's not unusual and it's not, it's not, not possible. It's totally possible to meet somebody and connect and build a relationship. So those are my tips and I want to open it up now to Q and a anything about this, Anything related to this topic, anything related to um, dating and relationships in general during this time period, um, I would tell you don't make it something so specific that it's, you know, like your exact personal story and, and it's so nuanced and detailed, like it's a private thing. I can't answer a question like that. I could answer more generic things, um, detailed things, but just not like exactly, what do I do, Aliza? Do I stay in it or do I get out? For that, we, we should have a call. Um, before we get to the Q and A, um, which I'm really excited about, can you please summarize the three points and like any, just sum it up for us? Okay. So three points. Number one is curiosity connects. So be genuinely curious about the person that you're with. Number two is bring out their best. Don't hyper-focus on you all the time. Once you get deeper into a relationship, work on bringing out their best. This is not just a dating tool and technique in marriage. You are going to need this one every single day of your married life. <laughs> so make sure that you bring out their best. And number three is understand and accept the person that you're with. You don't have to like it. You don't have to agree with it. You don't even have to be on the same page with it. But you must, must, must understand who this human being is. Accept that this is who they are, even if it's not what you want them to be and accept them so that they feel like they can be connected to you, they can be open with you and they can build a relationship with you. Um, can you just give us an example of a couple curiosity connects questions like one for male, one for female? Ooh, so, Yes, but no, it should be personal to them, meaning whomever you're with, you want to just dig in deeper to whatever they're talking about or whatever they've mentioned. So it, it, it's not, it can't be generic, meaning like if I, even if I give you a question now also, you can't use this question. You know what I mean? Like it's, it has to be about that person. So I'm trying to think, let's just think for a minute. Um, mm -mm. No pressure or anything. You're not yeah. being put on the spot. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, again, like I, I mentioned about like brands or something and talking about clothing and um, for somebody, it, it's related to something deeper in their life. Like don't take whatever somebody says at surface level, dig into it a little bit and get curious about it and find out why. Like even if somebody, I don't boring. Oh, they're a teacher and they like their job. Great. Why did they get into it? Like not just were they teaching their stuffed animals at two years old and always had a classroom and, and did they just have this passion and love for it? Was that ingrained in them? Were their parents teachers? And so they learned from them. They're like, you know, that's what I'm good at. So I just want to do it too. Was it something that they discovered on their own? Like just try, try to find out like why, where, whatever it is came from. Someone just, suggest, just suggested an easy one is that's so interesting. Can you tell me more about that? Right. Right. So that's a great generic question. And that's a good, like when you don't have anything that pops into your mind and you're like, I always say, tell me more. Ooh, that's so, yeah, so interesting. Tell me more. But it's not good after a certain level. Like tell me more is a good base level. I'm asking you to go to the next level and say, not just tell me more, but like, I want to know more because I'm really curious about and then fill in the blank. I'm really curious about why you got into this. I'm really curious about how you got started into, into so this. So picking really something curious. specific that they already said yes. and honing in on it and yes. inviting them to tell you more. Yes. 
And, I, and you can even use the words, I'm really curious, instead of, in addition to tell me more, I'm really curious about, um, oh, I had it and then, then I lost it. I was listening. Sorry. No, it's all good. It's life, right? And I'm really curious about, yeah, whatever. What you said is perfect. It has to be related to them. It must be related to them. Awesome. Okay, so we got some amazing questions that came in. I did answer some of them, so check answer questions um, already. Um, I feel like we're gonna do something new, Aliza. We didn't talk about this before. Ooh, I, I like hope that. I'm gonna take on some questions because <laughs> we've done this enough. So you know, just to like spice things up and like give us some talk time. Um, and but, like, in the meantime, can everybody just put in the chat? where you are calling in from. I like that. Um, all right, so these are, again, a lot of, not a lot, but some of the questions that came in were addressed in previous um, webinars. So if we don't get to yours, definitely recommend checking out the other Q&As because there's a ton of good content. There's like hours of content in past um, webinars. And yeah, I'm gonna address first the ones that um, are relevant to what we just discussed. One of them being, is it, is having a drink okay on a date? And I'm gonna take this one because I've heard Aliza say the answer before. If you are the kind of person who would take your date on for a drink on a first date, then yes. Um, and then someone else asked, who's buying the drink with a wink face? And I know that was said as a joke, but, but it's actually a really cute idea. If you are the guy, I don't know if I would do this for like date number one, but maybe no, once no, no. We're you- We're talking about a more developed relationship. Yeah, once you've already, developed a relationship, send a drink to her door, send a bottle of wine with like a little champagne glass or something, keeping it social distance and then have your drink together. Um, okay, I'm gonna turn it over to you. So what tips would you give someone who is, more, is naturally more introverted and shy, but has a lot of personality with close friends and family, but has a hard time bringing it out on a date? And I would take that a step further and say probably even harder on a virtual date. Right. Okay, so the main tip that I would give you is to take a minute to reacquaint yourself in your mind with the people that you're comfortable with. Before you get on the virtual call, have in mind my brother, my sister, my friend, my best friend, let's go with best friend, my best friend, how would I schmooze with my best friend, how would we talk, how would I be feeling when I was talking to my best friend? Tap into that feeling that's going on within you. And have in mind when I get on this call, I want, I have the ability to access any feeling or any thinking in, in my database. And I have that, recall that at that moment and then get on the phone with somebody. And not that you're pretending to talk to this best friend, but use that feeling that you have as you're talking to this other person and think, well, if I was talking to my best friend, what might I ask? Or what might I say? How might I be a little bit more open? What might I be willing to share that I normally wouldn't share with somebody? And consider actually sharing those types of things. You actually have the answers within you and you have the ability to do it because you've done it with other people. And all we're asking you to do is memory recall and to actually do those things with this new person that's in your life. It's not going to be easy on a first date or a second date. That's going to be harder for you. But once you get beyond that, we need to start giving little kind of like drip drip little bits of information and showing the connection. Otherwise, you're never going to get past the second or third date and things are going to dry up and they're going to be like, well, you know, he or she just can't connect with them. I'm just, I'm not feeling connected because you didn't bring your feelings into it. So, so use some of your skills from the past and, and bring them into this new relationship. Awesome. And here's a question that we actually haven't gotten before, which now that I see it surprises me. What would be your advice for someone who has ADD and often gets distracted during the conversation? And again, I would imagine with phone dates and video dates, that would be even more challenging. Okay goes like this. If you're doing a video date and you're on a computer, so video is going to help you more than phone. The person who wrote this in, you can comment as I'm, I'm saying this and tell me if this is accurate. If you are on a phone call, it's hard to do anything else because I have to look at the screen. And if I'm not looking at the screen and I'm looking over here or I'm looking down at my phone, you're going to know I'm looking at something else and you're going to catch me. Even if I have ADD, I am being monitored and therefore my brain is telling me, camera, doing the wrong thing, camera, camera, camera. And you're not going to be able to distract yourself as well. Where you're gonna have a hard time is if you are on 
a phone date and you're on your phone and oh maybe you have a headset so you plug your headset in and now you're looking at your phone and now you're checking your email and yeah uh uh-huh mm-hmm and you're checking your text messages and oh now you're on your computer and because there's nobody visually doing any monitoring on you and you're not monitoring yourself you're gonna have a harder time so for the ADD data we could do a whole thing on ADD data but for the ADD I'm making notes yeah yeah you should totally like lean towards video it should and if you do phone calls they should be short and the other tip for phone if you are going to do a phone call and you're like Aliza we're not getting on video we're going to do a phone call so it's it's like you know it's like a horse like this with the blinders on so that they don't get distracted with what's going on so turn your lights out if it's at night turn your lights out so that your room is completely pitch black and commit to not looking at any technology just be on the phone there'll be nothing else to look at there'll be nothing else to think about there'll be nothing else to see and you'll be hyper focused on the person that's there your mind still may wander okay that's just a thing you'll have to deal with that but all of the other distractions that normally happen will not be there for you if it's a day date you know i don't know stick a blanket over your head i'm just kidding <laughs> um well mine is the blanket part but um, I mean, you, could put, you could put a um one of those eye, sleeping masks on that. yeah you could put one of those eye masks on and sit there and have a conversation like that so look, these are interesting unique and different types of techniques and you have to try things that are out of the box otherwise you you don't know what's going to work for you and you can't just go with the you know regular old stuff or you'll be talking and playing with your phone and you won't make a new connection Makes sense. Um, and I would add, and Aliza, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that it probably makes sense to schedule a time frame for the date. Probably not going to be a super long conversation because that might end up leaving you like feeling frustrated and distracted. And then the other person's going to wonder what's going on. But if you like set a time from the beginning, right off the bat, it's, there's less pressure and right. a better chance of another date. It's a hour date. conversation or a two hour conversation. It's 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, and that's it. Do, know yourself with timing and don't, don't exceed that time frame in the beginning. Good. Awesome. Okay. Um, next question. What advice would you give to someone who has already felt isolated even before COVID-19 because peers are all married, et cetera, and I sink into comparing myself and feeling upset and envy? What's the advice for how to handle this? I think we have kind of done this before. Um, that nothing that I'm going to say, I'll just tell you, is going to make you feel great because what you want, you don't yet have. And there's nothing to soothe that voice inside that's like, no, but I want it now. And I know, so, so I just want to preface everything that I'm going to say with, I'm not necessarily going to comfort you by anything that I will say. And, and I'm sorry. And I'm sorry that, that, that there's not like this magical thing that I could do to make you feel a lot better. That being said, gratitude, focusing all of the blessings that you do have, uh, that you're healthy, that you're well, that you, whether you have a job or you don't, or family or friends, we all have things in our lives that we are grateful for. And we often talk about this gratitude being something to tap into when we say thank you for all the things that we have. Hashem showers upon us more things so that we should have more gratitude to be thankful for. So make yourself somebody who's grateful for what they have. Um, you could also use that, that jealousy in a healthy way, meaning I want this. I want a relationship. I want, I want to have what these people have. Let me tap into the energy of couplehood, of connection. Let me, let me try to just strengthen myself in seeing or knowing if they did it, I can do it. It happened for somebody else in the world. It can also happen for me. I see it over and over again, and people are like, yeah, but Elisa, it happened to somebody else. It didn't happen to me. Oh, yes, it didn't happen today or yesterday or last year or 10 years ago. It didn't, and I'm so sorry, but it will happen because that's how the world was created. The world was created with you and your soulmate coming from one world and one body into this world in two bodies, and then you find them. And you didn't find them, it's okay. You will find them. The person that searches for them continuously, continuously, you have to know you will find them. Build yourself up into a positive state of being. So not for the sake of feeling good, for the sake of having a smile on your face and in your heart so that when you meet somebody, that person can see that smile that you're a really happy person and a healthy person to be around that they also want to be around. 
Awesome. And I've said this a million times, but I want to say it again, because one of my favorite pieces of advice that you gave me, I really found it comforting to remember that I'm going to fail 99% of the time. When it comes to dating, the only time that you're going to like win, so to speak, or make it is the last time is with the person that you're actually going to marry God willing for life. So if it didn't happen yet, that's, that's a good thing. Cause that means you didn't meet the right person and, and, and yeah. you messed them up. You didn't pass right. up the, the right person. And it also means if you're having all of these failures, meaning that you're not finding the person, it means that you're trying. And the person that finds their soulmate is the person that continuously tries. If you don't try, we have a problem. If you're trying and making an effort, but it didn't succeed yet, that is considered success. It's awesome. Trying is the effort that we want to see happen. Thank you. Okay, I'm not going to put on a timer because last time I put on a timer, everyone's like, why is your phone buzzing? Yeah, I'll, do, I'll, do a I'll do a minute. We'll do a minute. Um, but yeah, let's try to keep them to a minute just so we can get through as many questions as possible. Mm -hmm. um, ooh, more questions keep coming in and the one keeps bouncing. Um, what to do when you have a great connection and the person does not follow up? Can you give us some strategies to know if there is potential or not in this connection? Hmm. Okay, so if the person does not follow up, I like the drip method, which basically means if you didn't hear from them and a week goes by, it could be before the weekend, have a good Shabbos, have a nice weekend, something, you know, hope you're doing well. Just a quick hi checking in, which is basically like a little reminder alert, like I exist. I don't know what happened in your life. We're not judging it. We're not talking about it, but I exist. And, and if they want to reach out to you, they will. If you send, I'm just going to give you a time frame. You, you know, meet somebody, you have a great thing and you think something's going to happen and they don't follow up with you. One week later, if they don't follow up, then you can follow up and just give that one reminder. If they don't follow up within a week, let two weeks go by. I know this is going to be irritating. I'm sorry. But let two weeks go by and then send another, you know, you know, hope you're doing well, you know, been keeping busy the last couple of weeks and, you know, have a great weekend kind of a thing. Do that two weeks later. Um, if there's no response, you have the option of two to three weeks later doing the same thing again. And after doing it three times, I would say drop it. And then if you're, you're, you didn't find anybody in six months, you could pop in and say, oh, how are you? Oh, I just, you know, you popped into my mind today thinking about you. Hope you're having a nice day, something like that. Basically, it's the drip, drip, drip method. And the reason for doing that is if they're going, we don't know what people are going through. Maybe they went through a bad breakup. Maybe somebody else came back into their lives. Maybe a family member is sick, God forbid. Maybe they lost their job. Maybe they lost their confidence and their mojo. Maybe, we don't know what's going on in their lives. We're not going to say that they're not interested in you. When they're not interested in you, they're going to say, you know, oh, I don't think there's a connection here. It's not working for me. Um, if they ghost you and they completely disappear on you, okay, so if you try a couple times, you don't look like a loser and you don't look desperate as long as you present it in a healthy way and you don't multiple text. It's just one text, boop, happens once for, for that week and that's it and then you disappear out of their life and it almost like, like, oh, like, oh, why aren't they texting me? Oh, I should reach out to them. Like, we're trying to draw them back in sweetly, remind them that we're here and that we had this nice time. We want to just have this moment of, like, they should reflect on that. And if they're in the position, position to reach out, then they will. And if not, then you can move on. But I, I told people to start the drip method even six months later, a year later, like, at any point in time, you could implement this. Awesome. Um, next question we have is, um, what if you're on, I like this one, we haven't gotten this one before. What if you're on a live date in a car and the guy drives, wait, what? I guess we're not, sorry, I misunderstood, I totally misunderstood that. <laughs> I totally misunderstood that. I think this is for when we are dating normally. Um, what if you're on a live date in a car and the guy drives on a freeway backwards, which isn't safe? Is that something you understand and accept? Um, no, I mean, I mean, I've done it before when the I, mean, I, right, I don't know the circumstances like, oh, you just missed your exit. So you're like, and then you get off the exit. So, un well, understanding and accepting still doesn't mean I have to marry him. Right. Accepting means I accept you for who you are and I'm not pretending in my brain or in the reality that you're anybody different than who you are. Whether you choose to accept and continue dating that person is a different story. If that and five other things lead you to believe this person isn't safe and you're not feeling safe with them, then you don't, you can still 
understand, accept, and walk away, right? So I want to make sure that you're clear that understanding and acceptance doesn't mean I understand, I accept, and I stick with you. It means I understand and I accept who you are as a human being in the world, and I choose whether I want to be with you or I don't. Is that a good clarification? I'm going to say yes, because I'm trying to manage everything no. else, so I'm listening <laughs> with all the <laughs> Um, all right. Okay. Um, I'm just going to ask this because we're getting so many questions about it. It's something we've addressed before, but how do you feel about dating multiple people virtually? At what point should you narrow it down to one? If you're dating them multiple people virtually for a while, like, are you going to end up meeting all of them? We'll probably won't get to that point. Tell, tell us about that a little bit. Mm, this is really complicated. This is difficult. And that's why we're asking the expert. <laughs> even when people are dating live and in person, sometimes people are dating virtually, even though it's not an ideal situation. Um, so here's the challenge. The challenge is when we are virtually like this, first of all, it doesn't feel so real. It feels a little bit imaginary and it feels a little bit like play. And it also feels like it's not really a first date. It just feels like it's the first conversation. And maybe I met you at, you know, an event, and this is like our schmooze time. And so what's ideal, ideal, pick one person, date one person, whether it's reality or virtually, get to know them, have a conversation two days later, have a conversation, you know, three, four days later, have a conversation, get the momentum going, start talking more frequently and see if you like them. If you are having a hard time getting things going, sometimes it's not really a date, sometimes it's just a schmooze, or it's just, you know, and you start schmoozing with multiple people. The challenge is if you do that, you start comparing this person to this person. Is this one right for me or is that one right for me? And, and I like this about them, but not this about them. And, and then the problem is neither of them are right for me, but this one's better than the other one. So I'll date this one longer. And then like, really you should get rid of both of them and date somebody else, but you, you're, you don't have enough headspace going on. So I would really like if your brain was clear and your headspace was clear and that you didn't date multiple people, but the person that you should date and, and get to first is the person who is most engaged with you, that you're most interested in, that has the most consistent replies to you, where you have the most consistent communication. Because you're going to be able to figure out if that person's right or wrong for you sooner. And so you should fo hyper focus on them and that let every, put everybody else to the side if possible. That's ideal. Awesome. awesome. Okay. Um... How do we deal with family during virtual dating? What are some best practices? So what does that mean? How do we deal with family? I'm wondering um, the same thing. Like, is it like what, how we, <laughs> what do we tell family? Is it like, how do we get them to leave us alone while we're having a date or not listen in, you know, with the ear and a cup to the door so they know what's going on? Like, is it, I don't know exactly. How about you clarify that question and we'll get to that um, next. Um, just to follow up to the last question, is there a point at, or at what point does it become unhealthy um, to, oh, hold on. This is a mix of questions. Oh, there's so much going on. Um, sorry. Give me a second. I know. I see there's 34 questions. <laughs> it's not just that. A lot of them are stuff that we've talked about in the past and I'm trying to get to the ones that... Um, that we don't, but I, I actually like this question. Um, and I don't, I don't know what you're going to say about it, but I want to hear. Um, so someone responded to what I said and said, sorry, I don't agree with the idea that you only succeed with your soulmate. I dated a girl for a long time. She wanted me to marry her, but I said, no, I succeeded with her, but it wasn't meant to be. She married someone else. Right. I hear what he's saying. And he's saying, I was successful because I had clarity and I moved on and I didn't choose somebody that wasn't right for me. So he succeeded in the dating process of doing the right thing and making the right decision. No, that's what I'm hearing. I mean, maybe, but that wasn't what I was saying. I don't even know if I used the word succeed, but what I meant was like, okay, whatever. We can, we can, we can have a replay. It's on video. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think but what you were trying to say is, not you, you only succeed, but the only person 
that it's going to be right with is the person that you end up marrying. Everybody else is going to turn into a no, even if it's an extended no or, or a broken engagement or whatever, but everybody else in the world should be a no. And all other things dating related should not work out. And when it does work out, it should be with the right person. That was what you were really trying to say. Correct. Um, when video dating, after the first few dates, do you feel that it's still the guy's responsibility to lead the date or plan the virtual activities? So whatever you would normally do in dating, do virtually. So if you would normally do that in your dating life, then you need to do that virtually. Do I prefer that? I do. I kind of have this traditional view where if you would like your lady to be a lady, you need to be a gentleman. And, you know, it's, there's something very appealing about that. There's something very attractive about that. Not everybody likes that. Everybody is different. But um, to me, if that's what you would normally do in person, then great, do that virtually. If it's not what you would do in person and you would expect the other person to plan it, okay, so you have that kind of relationship, then you should both be on the same page about that. If you don't know if the other person is on the same, like if you don't know where they're holding, then your default should be that the guy should plan the date. That should be the default, unless she's like, no, no, I want to plan the date this week. We're going on a virtual tour of the museum. You know, like that's, if she, if she chirps up that she wants to do something, then let her do it. If not, assume that it's on you. And okay. make it interesting, please. Just make it interesting. Google what to do on virtual dates. There's tons of ideas and things out there. And there's so many things right now that are free. You can virtually see museums all over the world that you could never even get to. And, and there's just ways to make it interesting. Awesome. Okay. So someone asked, is it true that Florida allows people to date in person as long as they keep six feet apart? So I don't know. I don't think either of us are up to date on Florida laws. Um, I don't know Florida specifically, but I know in general, the six feet apart is a thing in many different places. And I have heard of, I'm going to interrupt you, the grocery store date, where if you live locally and close enough, or even if you're not, you know, you're within driving distance, that they plan to meet and they go grocery shopping together. You know, like you could stay on this end of the cart and they could stand on that end of the cart and, and you could fill the carts and have conversations. Um, and I kind of think it's a really cute idea. It's definitely a practical idea because we all need, need food. Um, it could be that you are going to be looking at them with a mask on. So you're not going to be actually seeing their smile. They're going to have to see the smile through the eyes and not through your cheeks that are covered by these amazing masks. And you might look a little silly wearing these gloves. But um, but it, it is an idea, and I heard of it, and and it's. I don't like, know. I'm gonna I'm gonna like chime in here. If, no, if you I haven't like already been dating, if you haven't already been dating, that is not the way to start a relationship. It's not. No, I want to see your face. I don't want to date you for six weeks or six months online until I see you. I want to see you. If I don't like even your face half covered by a mask, then I I might not want to get to know your personality if, if this doesn't even look like a match to me. Okay. I'm going to give you five minutes to answer this because tons of it was covered before, but so many questions are coming in. So I'm going to assume that a lot of people on this webinar are new um, and I want to take five minutes to address this. So talk to me about everything virtual dating. Why are we doing it? Is it worth it? Um, isn't there stuff that's lost in like nonverbal communication that we don't get, I, what about the fact that we don't see the, our date in different settings, like interacting with other people, it's very limited. Um, how long should we be virtually dating? If it's only gonna be, if it's gonna be for the next, who knows how long does it make sense to be virtually dating when we don't know when we're gonna actually meet in person? At what point is it not healthy to see the person until you meet that and them like actually in person? Okay, I think I covered most of them, go. <laughs> okay. Yes, no, no, yes, maybe, I don't know, yes. Perfect, <laughs> on to the next one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, next question. No, so seriously. Um, okay, I'm going to like rewind my brain and all of those questions. Should you be dating right now? Maybe. I don't know if you should or you shouldn't. If you're somebody that's sitting home and you're like, I can't sit home and not date, like how long is this going to be? I Okay, so then you should be dating. If you're like, Elise, this is ridiculous. I have a hard time connecting in post person. You want me to do this virtually? Don't date. Do something else. I've got Dating Detox. I've got um, Daters Academy. I have different programs that you can do online. You can do personal growth. You can do therapy. You can do art and creativity. You can music jam out and, you know, become a musician overnight. You know, you could, there's so many other things you could do in life 
not dating, it might not be right for you. You've got to know you. If you don't know you and you're not sure, call me. We'll have a, a session and we'll figure it out. But if dating is right for you now, it's a very personal thing. I don't think it's fair to say that there should be this rule, like, you know, this, this, this stay at home rule. And so we don't have a choice, right? Except for medical emergencies or food or this, we're not supposed to leave. Okay, fine. I don't think there should be a rule. No dating. I do not think somebody should make that rule. You can't kill love. You can't kill love. You can, it, it, no. People date long distance all the time. Forget about COVID-19. I've got couples, they're in one country, they're in another country. They're on, on this continent, they're on that continent. I've got people that have been long dating, distant, long distance dating for, not for years, like for me, couples that I've seen over the course of years date on different people, date all the time long distance. It's totally normal to date long distance. This is just a self-imposed long distance that doesn't have, it's, it's not my choice to get on a plane right now to come and see you. That's the difference. The difference is when the world reopens and we reemerge, what is it going to look like and how long is it going to be? And we don't know. So I, I'm not a fan of just shutting down dating. I think shutting down dating is very dangerous and not ideal. If you, if the whole thing worries you or you don't know what to do, you need to get more information. If you don't want to get into an uncomfortable position, you need to learn more. You need to research it. Watch, uh, we've got other webinars, watch other articles, uh, read articles, watch videos, just get to know what it means to do it during this time and to do it properly. I don't actually want people dating for tons of time without getting to know somebody, but you see, we're on this webinar. Do you feel like you're getting to know me a little bit? Yeah, do you see Sarah? You're getting to know her a little bit. You see me, I like use my hands a lot and you know, like I have a lot of movements and gestures and I'm personable and you know, I have expression in my voice. Do you get to know me? Do you get to know Sarah? Like you, you, you're starting to understand us a little bit. So you are seeing some nonverbal communication. You're not seeing with me how I interact with somebody out in the outside world. Um, on this call, you do have the benefit of seeing the two of us so you can see how we interact with each other. Um, but you are, you're not necessarily going to see how people interact with other people in the world, but we don't always get that in dating. How often do you go on dates with other people? You don't, not until you're pretty serious. Do you meet their friends or family or like, we're not meeting anybody anyway, how they treat the waiter or how they handle a person on the street. You know, there's like different ways to evaluate things, but we don't always get the opportunity to do that. So it's not like you're totally missing out on that. And with video and technology, you are getting a sense of the person. I'll tell you, I've worked with a lot of clients, almost all of my clients virtually, okay? I've got the guy that sits in his car and he's got, he's driving. And I told him, don't drive while, don't do this while you're driving. And this is my only time. I only have time now to do it. And the phone is on the dashboard like this and I'm seeing him and it's cutting in and out with the reception. And he's not looking at me. He's looking at the road. He's like, you know what I mean? And you understand and you get it. I could see his whole personality. I also learned that he drives with his phone in the car. And like, this is not the way that we do things. And I asked him to slow down and I asked him to have a call only when he's pulled over. And I told him that if you're doing this with me, I know you're probably also doing this on dates and this is an appropriate behavior, right? And so I also have people who pick up the, the phone and they're like in the middle of work and other things and they do things in between and they're like, oh, wait, hold on. I got a text message. Wait, what did you say? I wasn't, I, I missed it. I'm sorry. I, and, and that's okay. They're busy. They're ambitious they're chasing after things they're doing things they got a lot going on does it mean that I'm not a priority well no not that maybe I don't know it just means that they they've got something going on you get to know them so I do think there are ways of getting to know people you also are going to know very very well how somebody handles stress this is a perfect time to figure out how somebody handles stress. And if they don't handle it well, or if they have a very negative view, or if they're never happy, or this is so difficult for them, and they're always complaining about the situation, bye. No, thank you. Unless you like that, and unless you want that in your life. If that's not what you want in your life, if you wouldn't want to be quarantined with this person, don't talk to them. It's a really great barometer. You can judge based on that. So I would challenge you. I'm not going to disagree because I kind of agree with you. Yeah, it's difficult to get to know them. But if you actually talk to people for long enough, you do get to know them. You have got to work on being more observant. You've got to work on paying attention more. 
You have got to use more senses, okay? You cannot count on being in person and just seeing them. You've got to notice. You've got to listen not just to what they say, how they say it what's behind what they're saying. You've got to watch, do they look at the screen or are their eyes all over the place? Are they so distracted? They get up and down six times and 10 times and they can't sit while they're talking to you. Are they always like flustered and out of breath? Or like, or are they present? Are they with you? Are you having a deep, meaningful conversation with another human being that you're like, wow, I want to get to know them more. And like, I wish I could meet them. And that's why I do recommend the supermarket date. Sorry. Okay. Okay. But wait, don't, that does not mean to psychoanalyze their every last word. Oh no. <laughs> No, not, no, that. no, but, but use the information you have yeah. so of all the things that you don't have. We don't have in-person dating anymore. See you later. Adios. Sayonara. Gone. Use what you do have. You right. have so many other things to evaluate on and use it. And just know this is what, this is what everybody is doing. You are not unique. If you're dating in the world, you, in the world, you are That's doing mad. <laughs> the club. Welcome. And I just want to add, because a couple people asked specifically about long distance dating. They're not, you know, they can't travel right now. Right now, there is no dating happening. So everyone's dating virtually. You're in the same boat as everyone else. So yeah, as long as you're both aware that this is the situation and you're open and comfortable and committed to the process of exploring where this goes. And whenever you're able to date, you'll travel to date. Um, kind of everything Lisa just said applies to those situations as well. Right, and just for long distance like that, you normally wouldn't give it a shot long distance because there's probably 50 people locally that you'd rather meet. But because you're not meeting anybody locally, you might be more open to dating long distance. So now's the time to give it a shot. If it doesn't work, like two or three calls, you're gonna be done and you're gonna move on. It's not gonna drag. Long distance dating and virtual dating cannot drag on if you're trying to build a relationship because if it doesn't build and click, it's just going to be a fail and you're going to move on and you'll try with somebody else. So it's actually yeah. going to weed out mo actually it's probably going to weed out all of those maybes that probably wouldn't turn into anything anyway, because you're waiting for that spark that really draws you both in. So maybe this is even better. Like flip, flip mm. your, <laughs> see it through my rose colored glasses. <laughs> I love you. Um, okay. I like this question. What would be your advice? You like all the questions. What? <laughs> you what? like all the questions. You always say that. You're like, oh, this is a good one. I because like I'm picking all the good ones. No, I'm kidding. They're all good questions. Just a lot of them have been addressed before. So I'm trying to find the ones that we haven't addressed. Mm -hmm. So that gets me excited, okay? Yeah, I know. Um, what would be your advice to a girl who's used to having a lot of bros throughout her life and being more male natured to begin with? which results in a struggle with shifting that automatic bro zone response in her dating dynamic relationships. Okay. So she kind of like friend, friend zones them, like hanging out with the buddy kind of thing. Kind of sounds that way. Yeah. Good. That's a good question. Right. Okay, I, I, I want to have a session with her. I want to ask her like, you know, a bunch of questions like, have you ever had one of those bros turn into a boyfriend or anybody that you connected with? Have you, never done it with you know anybody like that do you do that on purpose is that a defense mechanism like all these questions are running through that, my mind that i can't ask her um basically what you have to do you're gonna you're gonna bro zone them okay and your brain is gonna bro zone them and the second thing that i want you to do is as you do that because that's just your that's your default your default is to bro zone everybody and you're just like hey stop okay cool right you're just hanging and then i want you to go okay wait lens shift i want you to put on a different pair of glasses and we'd be like potential date marry good qualities loyal committed good human being hmm cute hmm huh maybe okay i want you to go through them in your brain a bunch of them you're gonna be like no 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 not for me just my buddy but some of them you're gonna actually have maybe and those maybes i want you to make a list of them and then i want you to reevaluate and i want to put your next pair of lenses on like Hmm, do I know anything about him relationship wise? Is there anything more enticing? Has he given me any clues that maybe he's also interested in me? Because by the way, men and women can't be friends. It's just not true. You're not friends. Either you like them or they like you. And if you don't like them, then they like you. <laughs> that thing. And I'm, it's right. I'm telling you, I've made so many matches like this. It works so beautifully. Send me a message when you get engaged to one of these bros. I want to know it was you. I want, I want. <laughs> at marriagemindedmentor.com. I want it. I'm telling you. And by the way, this is the best way to make a match right now. 
the best way to make a match right now is through your history, not meeting somebody new, not somebody random from la 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 land from never never land that you don't even know who they are where they're from. Look in your own little black book. You've got one. I know you've got a whole big fat phone book right here. It's got everything in it. I want you to look through it. I want you to go through your brain. I have a whole course on this. It's called Mystery in Your History. There's a bunch of steps. 35% of the people that I work with marry somebody from the bro zone or the mystery in their history that there's nobody that I know that I'm going to marry. There is. I'm telling you, 35% of you on this call are going to marry somebody that's already in your life. Okay, don't hate me. And you could say no, but like we only have 87 people watching. Um, but my brain like is fired up. I know mystery in your history. Guys, I promise you this is not pre-planned. Like this is not. Call Sarah we, up on we stage. We didn't even have, have a call today to like <laughs> open the webinar. There was no prep time. <laughs> um, so I know mystery in your history is part of Daters Academy, but what if we pull it out and for anyone who's interested in buying just mystery in their history, maybe we could like do a one-time exception because I happen to think it's an incredible program. Okay, it's basically it. what Aliza just said, but it literally yeah. walks you through the process. Great. Let's do it. Um, okay. we'll set, you'll set it up. because you're Yeah, up. I'll put that in the email. And we'll put it in the email. Okay. Mystery in your history, and then I will get back to you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Just thinking now. Um, all right. Okay. Wait, so I want to say, to, to finish it, 35% of my people marry people from their history. So I always tell people, like, don't shut me down the road of finding somebody in all the groups that you have to go into to find them. Forget about your future. Look in your past. Look in your present. Look in the people who are in and around your life. There might be somebody fantastic who you potentially might have interest in or who might have interest in you and hasn't told you. Okay. Awesome. Um, why does the dating process seem more like interviewing for a job rather than getting to know someone in a fun, flirtatious, non-competitive sort of way? I feel like I'm always in an interview type situation and it's not fun. Yeah, some people don't know how to flirt. So my first question would be, do you know how to flirt? <laughs> right? Like if you don't know how to like build that little bit of chemistry and have a little playful, engaging, appropriate, modest, you know, in the way that's comfortable for you type of connection, if you don't know how to do it and you're just counting on them to know how to do it, <laughs> we should have a whole course on this, which we don't, but there should be a whole course on this flirting, this connecting, this building the relationship. Talking, you know, what we talked about tonight about deeper connections, that's a piece of it, but that's not what you're talking about. You're talking about the precursor to that, which is like, let's be playful. Let's be fun. Let's have some banter. Let's have some silliness. I have a couple that I'm working with um, and right now they're struggling with exactly this. They, they have this playful banter fun, but, but the question is, well, wait, is there anything deeper? Actually, I should just send a webinar to them so that they can watch and learn all the steps to having a deeper connection. But we've been talking about this. How do you build a deeper connection? We do have the playfulness. So I don't care what you're missing, build the side of the relationship that you don't have and do not count on the other person to do this for you. I am pointing at you, but do not, do not think that they know how to do this or that like, oh, it sh they should do it 50, 50. You put in half the effort. I'll put in the after half the effort, but you lead the way. Nah, we cannot control any other human being in the world. We have a hard enough time controlling ourselves. So you have to be the one to lead the way. You want to have a little fun? See if you can engage them in a little bit of playful, flirtatious, fun connection. If you can't get them to engage with you, eh, Strike. Next one. Move on. Okay. Um, what happens when your date wants to meet in person while your city is on lockdown? How do you politely say no? You know, I would also love to meet you. It really sounds amazing. So our city's on lockdown, and I'm kind of one of those people that like follows the rules, but. I'm going to keep my eye on the news, and as soon as there's, like, the slightest bit of an opening, I would, I would really love to meet. I'm, like, I feel like you. I also really want to meet you in person. Or go on a shopping date. Shh, sorry, don't listen. Go on a shopping date. Go to the supermarket. You're going to the supermarket anyway. They're going to the supermarket. You could see their face. It's not a date, but it's a meetup, you know? Sorry, I didn't hear that part. So, anyway, yeah, just do what I said. <laughs> okay, how do I get to how do I get myself to try dating again after heartbreak? Oh, no, don't don't date right away. 
I don't know how long it's been. It can be two months or it could be two years. It depends on the relationship. Sometimes things take a really long time. Heal your heartbreak first. Um, first thing that comes to my mind, and again, not like promoting, promoting, but like dating detox, just detox from the past. So go through an emotional, you know, let down, let yourself, you know, sink down, build yourself back up. If you've already sunk down and you've been in that down spot for too long, you've got to build yourself up. Don't start dating until you get yourself into a better position because if you are here, you're going to meet somebody at your level. Uh -uh -uh. Bring yourself up to your best so that you meet somebody at your level. So just be very careful. And this is more like a one-on-one -on -one coaching type of thing or a therapy thing or getting a good book on getting over somebody that you've lost or watching a TED talk and how to move past the relationship or something like that. Do things to build yourself up and give yourself enough time for that and then move on and date. And listen, if it wasn't the right one, then thank God you didn't marry the wrong person. Even if it hurts, I know it's not just easy and no big deal, but even if it hurts, if it wasn't the right one, it wasn't the right one. And you're, I'm going to just give you one. This is Aliza's one tip and tool. Your partner is also looking for you. And they're hoping that you're okay. And they're hoping that you're healthy. And they're hoping that your heart is open to meeting them. And they're hoping that your mind is clear and free from anybody else in the past so that they can meet you. And they desperately want to meet you. And so if you can get yourself in a position to meet them, then Hashem and divine intervention will come to bring you together. So maybe have that in mind. All right. Um Quick interruption, someone in the chat reminded us to about the Omer. So if you're counting, don't forget to count. Um, a follow-up question to what you answered before. What if there's a girl who broke up with you but wants to be friends? How is this possible according to what you said? And why does she still want to be friends and text you from time to time? Because she likes you. And she emotionally needs you. And you feel a certain need for her. And for whatever reason in her brain, she decided this isn't for her. You aren't for her, so to speak. But hey, this is a great person to have in my life. And in my network of people and my superpower network of people, you help me. You bring me up. You do good things for me. I need you. And, and you could do something for me. So that is my thinking about why somebody does that. The other reason that somebody would do that is they didn't want to break up and then just cut it off completely. So it's like, let's be friends, but then they don't want to be friends, but that's not the case because she is actually texting you. So two things. Number one, if you actually like her and you want to win her back, I should create a course on this, Sarah, just saying, you could take notes, but the way to win her I'm back. I'm not taking notes, but I will no. take a note that we should create a course on this. What are we talking about? <laughs> But in the way to win her back, this, this has worked with numerous clients. So I'm telling you from many success stories that the way to win her back is to cut her off. Mm -hmm. That's right. Cut her off. And then when she reaches out to you, you just say, you know, it's so nice to hear from you. And, you know, I think it's better if we don't develop a friendship. You know, I still have warm feelings for you. And I don't really want to further develop them. I'm, I'm looking to find my soulmate. Make it clear that there's like a little bit of some interest there and then tell her you're creating this distance and it has to be a hard, firm line. Now, because you're not trying to block her out of your life, because we want her to send that message back like in six months or however long. Yeah, I've been thinking about it and I really like you too, da, 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 right? We want to create that. So you're not going to block her number from your phone and you're not going to block her email. If you were trying to totally get rid of somebody, I would tell you to block and, and not have their number. If, there's, if you're completely not interested, there is no purpose in communication, then you should completely block numbers and emails. You don't need any contact and people can't resist. So you just have to set up a healthy boundary. But if you're trying to win her back, the method is actually to cut the relationship off completely. Do not give her any piece of you. Either she can have all of you to herself or none of you. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, I don't know if you just answered this, but any suggestion for how to woo a platonic friend without coming on too strong? Oh, this is different. Yeah, this, well, this is after a breakup. This is new. I love wooing platonic friends. This is another one of my favorites. You're hitting all of my favorite topics tonight. So if you are a platonic friend, um, you start with like the subtle hints. 
you know, like if you, cause your friends are ready, you know, and you happen to see them, they got dressed up for the webinar and you're like, oh, you look great. Or you look, you look cute. Oh, you're, you're so cute in your Tuesday pajamas. <laughs> you know, your AM pajamas, <laughs> did you change from your PM? Yeah. Whatever. So um, uh, I would drop subtle hints infrequently. It shouldn't be every conversation. I would be complimentary in a normal way. And the goal is to build a little bit more of a connection. And then, and then you have to start with like the made up scenarios. Like you start telling each other about something because you're friends and they're telling you about their dating experience and you're telling them about yours. And you're like, yeah, you know, like, I wonder what it would be like if we dated. <laughs> that would be funny, wouldn't it? You know, you just kind of throw out like, I wonder question. And, and then you stop talking. You say nothing and you listen. Oh, that's so hard. Yes. You're like, yeah, I wonder what it would be if, like if we dated. Like, <laughs> wow, that would be, wow, so different. And you're like, yeah. And, and if they're like, yeah. So anyway, like the other day I went to the market and, you know, like if they totally ditch the question and move on, they're not ready to hear anything else. If they're like, yeah, I don't know. I wonder too. I mean, I like thought about that once. Oh, you've got an opening. Or if they're like, oh my gosh, no way, you're like my brother, like I mean, you're like my sister, like I could never do that. Okay, then you have your answer at least for today, but that's drip, drip, drip when that happens. I don't know if I agree with that. <laughs> you don't have I to agree. Know, What's no, your I'll tell you why. It just reminds me, I, I had a situation where I was, I was, I feel like this is so classic, it's cheesy, but like my really, like one of my best friend's brothers and I were like super chummy chummy and we were just friends and like all the time people used to ask us all the time why we weren't dating because we were always at Shabbos meals together and everyone yeah. would see us interact and they would all be like so why aren't you guys dating and we'd be like now nah, we're like siblings like he'd say like nah she's like my sister and I'd be like nah she's my he's my brother <laughs> and we used to say that all the time and I didn't know that he was thinking something else and he didn't know that I was thinking something else and we did end up like actually um seeing if there was anything there yeah. but I don't know just because they like respond with like no that would be weird I don't know I think if they totally ignore it and, and change the topic yes but if they just like say like oh that's weird we're like so we're like you're like my brother I don't know sometimes I feel like that's a very automatic like yeah, defense that's mechanism yeah, yeah. Um, because what why were you thinking that and you didn't tell me anything until now, you know? Right, 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 right. And they might not want to get into it in that moment. And if there's other people around or if there's not, or if they're not ready to deal with it, or if they're dating somebody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I agree with that. I agree with that. So pursue that. Yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like the best response to that is like, yeah, but we're not. <laughs> um, but then okay. you can be playful. You can be like, yeah, but we're right. not. You can be like, but we could be. Like, <laughs> what if, what no, if no, no. I meant, I meant, but we're not, so we're not, you're not my brother. Oh, like, oh, yeah, oh you're not my brother. Yeah, but I'm not. <laughs> right. And then see where she goes. If she's like, no, you really are, then you know, okay, no. Good answer. Good but answer. If, yeah. But if she's like, oh, you know. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, here's a three-parter. Um, so yeah, I'm going to answer two of them. We have 10 minutes left. So I'm going to answer two of them and I'll let you answer the third one. Why Zoom video date? Why not just exchange pictures and talk instead? This mystery... I don't know. This worked for our grandparents during World War II and they got married for a lifetime. I'm going to say what Elisa said. We're not our grandparents and we're not in the times of World War II. I mean, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't think photos are enough these days and it's not enough for an extended period of time unless you're the person who was going to date and, and have an arranged marriage. So if that's you where you're just going to have it arranged and they show you a quick photo and you're like, good, I'm in, great, then that's, that's who you are. But the majority of the people I think that are on this call are not in that boat. That's not, yeah. that's not how we date. Um, this next question, I'm going to tag on to another question. Video Zoom dating makes guys expect that, very generic statement here, but makes guys expect they can FaceTime you anytime and you're not dressed, made up. Isn't that odd that guys call random times to FaceTime no matter how long you've dated? And then another question we had was, um, a guy asked me if I wanted, if we wanted to talk and we said, yes, we set up a time to talk and then he video called and I wasn't ready for that. Um, so how do I get that across? Uh, yeah. So if it, you know, like, oh, let's talk at this. Okay, great. Looking forward to our phone call. Right. So just be clear. Phone I call. feel like now that phone call means a video, like no one really differentiates. If you said yeah. a phone call, I wouldn't know that you specifically meant a phone call versus a video call. 
Okay, great. Should I call you on this number still? That's going to still be, am I too old school? Can no, you're not, but WhatsApp. Everyone video WhatsApps. And then they're just going to video call. Okay, so I think- I think you should just ask. Yeah, just ask. Just be straightforward. If you're one of those people, you're like me and you don't want to be super direct, get over it. Just be super direct. Sorry. <laughs> Just say, I'm not up for a video call, but I am up for a phone call. Would that work for you? And I think if it happens in the moment, you get a video call at a time you set up to call, you could totally just respond, hey, sorry, I thought this was going to be a phone call. Right. And don't pick up the call. Let the right, call obviously. appear and text them back and say that or call them back and say, hey, I thought it was going to be a phone call. I'm not prepped for a video call. Totally. And if they're like, oh, I don't care how you look. It's not about that. The phone has to be in the position, the room, they had like the lighting, like, no, it's, it's like, it's like a professional date here going on. I just was up for a phone call. Awesome. And here's the third of these questions. Why do some guys date a girl for years, bolting at any hint of pressure or ultimatums, but they eventually married that very girl wasted years. Do you actually see that happening often? Wait a minute. They, I got confused at the end. Me too. Um, no, it sounds like, I, I think maybe bolting isn't the right word, but it sounds like pressure ultimatum they freak out but they do eventually marry that person they, they after years yeah why has nothing to do with the girl has everything to do or a girl or guy whoever would take that long it has everything to do with their inability to make a commitment and it's not just related to relationships it often happens in, with work or jobs or commitment to a, a certain type of degree or, or making decisions they are not skilled in decision making. The other option is they could be very skilled in decision making and they've decided I wasn't ready for this in my life until this age and therefore I'm not this age and my brain said until I'm this age I'm not going to do this and therefore I'm not ready to move on with this or I expect to date a long time. I'm in no rush. I don't care. I'm not ready to start a family. I don't need the financial obligations. I don't need to actually make a decision. I have you. You have me. I love you. You love me and so we'll keep going. But I think in order to avoid those types of things, you should have conversations early on just about the dating process. So in general, this, this is a, uh, a not plug for my book. That's Get Real, Get Married. It's on Amazon. But it has in there the due date, D-E-W, for dating, engagement, and wedding. What's your ideal due, due date? When do you want to start dating? After how long of dating would you like to get engaged? Assuming the other person's on the same page with you. And after how long of being engaged would you like to get married? Fill that out now before you're in a relationship. And then when you get into a relationship, you can have a due date conversation and say, well, what's your idea? And if, if it's the guys, often, because I do this a lot with my clients, it's like one of my signature things. And, and often I ask this question and they're like, I don't know. I don't, I'd like, if it works, it works. Like, whatever. Like, whatever she's comfortable with, whatever you want. I was like, no, no, no. She wants to get married in two months. You good with that? He's like, no. I was like, oh, good. Three months? No. Four months? No. Five months? No. Six months? I don't know. Maybe I'll think about engagement six or stuff. So I just start using a number line and asking them questions to pinpoint their true comfort. And they always say, well, I don't know. I said, no, no, no. We're assuming you know this is the right person. You're happy with them. There's no questions about the person. This is just about the relationship timeline. So I, I would push people to have an answer, but you've got to have your own answer and you've got to know about this process in order to be able to move somebody else through that process earlier on in the relationship and not four years down the road. If you're already four years or three years down the road, yes, they most, most of them, they do just get married after pressure. It just happens. And it's not that they love you any less. It's just this is their thing. This is their hang up. Sorry. All right. Okay. So we got a question. Is this a weekly event? It's not officially a weekly event, but we've been doing these webinars pretty often recently because they're fun for me. They're fun for Aliza and hopefully they're, and they're fun for you. And there's a ton of great information here. Um, we are not doing one next week, but we do have one coming up on May 5th, I believe. Is that the Wednesday? May 5th. Uh, so May 5th or 6th. I don't know. I'll have to check. I think it's the 6th. Wednesday, May 6th. That's, no, yeah. it's not. It yeah, is. Yeah. Web, web, um, what's that one called again? No, we didn't come up with a title, but we actually talked about doing something for engaged couples. Oh, that was going to be about me. Yeah, yeah. That's a different <laughs> one, but I think we should have a singles one. Do we have anything on May 3rd? Should we run two that week? Sure, but we don't have to like bore you with the logistics. So we'll let you know when that's <laughs> happening. Um, but just know that we are going to be doing this, I think, like 
more consistently. Frequently, yeah. Um, and then last question, and we'll close out with this. How do you know if you could benefit from a dating coach? Oh, that's a good question. I thought you'd like it. I do like that question. So if you are somebody who is growth oriented, if you are somebody who enjoys learning about yourself or learning and understanding about the dating process, if you are somebody who is really tired of not meeting the right person and has just really had enough of doing it however you've been doing it and you're like, you know what, I'm, I'm just kind of done with this. I'd rather just let, let me just try something different and explore different ways of dating then would highly benefit from a dating coach. If you are in any type of relationship, started before COVID-19, during COVID-19, virtual only, I don't know, I'm dating somebody, I like them, I don't like them, I don't know if I like them. If you're just in some sort of unusual situation and you don't have clarity, clar I am an, a clarity expert. I love searching for clarity. And I love it so much that we are actually creating a course on that. That's coming up, but not, I mean, that's like, well, it might be soon, actually. We'll talk about that later. But I... Should we ask here go that ahead, question ask. that you were going to ask yeah. on Facebook? Yeah, go ask, ask, ask. Um, okay, so we are looking for um, five individuals who are currently in a relationship, have never worked with Elisa before, and are seeking clarity in this relationship. So if that's you and you are willing and open to complete a um, 90 minute, like about one and a half to two hour workbook. And it doesn't have to be done in one sitting, but it does have to be done um, within three days. And then a 30 to 60 minute feedback um, questionnaire. Um, let us know. Shoot us an email at coach at marriagemindementor.com or you could just find Elise on Facebook, Elisa Bracha Ben Shalom. Um, it's, it's a great program. Like I said, I'm engaged. I used it to help me get to this point. Um, and it was really, really helpful. So we're just in the middle of developing the actual workbook. And so we're looking for some of you to actually give it a shot. So again, if you're single, have been in a relationship for over a month and have never worked with Elisa before, feel free to reach out. Okay, great. Uh, to finish answering the question. Um, oh, and someone wants to know what your number is. So I'm not going to give you Elisa's number, um, but I will tell you that if you go to the website, marriagemindmentor.com, um, you will find all the information that you need to learn more about coaching, working with Elisa. Um, yeah. If you, if you want to, we have up there a free 15 minute complimentary interview session where you can actually interview me to see if I'm a good fit for what you want. Or if I'm not the right fit, I have a whole team of coaches that are available and you can see their bio and choose which coach you would want to work with. You can interview them, get to know them. And if you think they're a great fit for what you're struggling with, then, uh, then you can sign up for sessions after that. Awesome. You know me and you know, I'm going to say, could we do one more question? <laughs> Yeah, hold on, Sarah. Somebody said, have you already dated the person continuing virtually, da, 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 or did you only date virtually? So do you see the question here that's on the chat? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, yes, we dated in person a few times. Okay, so this person said, we're ready to meet family and friends. How do we do that? So I asked, did you already date in person before COVID-19? Um, and they said, yes, we dated in person a few times. They're ready to meet friends and family. How do we cool. do that? Hmm. How do we do, how do we do? It? Yeah, I guess, I don't know. I don't know if you have more questions, but I kind of want to know, like, what do they, how long do they normally date? And what does it mean to meet friends and family? Does that mean you're getting engaged? Cause I feel like, I don't know, I'm not you, but I kind of feel like if you only met a couple times in person, maybe you're not ready to get engaged. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm not saying what, you know, your relationship, I'm just saying this, all this craziness. Um, but okay, so let, let me take a stab yeah. at it. I think what I would tell you is, if you're feeling like you want to meet friends and family and, and that's going to help you to develop the next level of your relationship, then I would advise you to do like this, a Zoom meeting and do it um, to the two of you and let's say, you know, one side's parents and then the two of you on a different meeting and then the other side's parents. And then if you want the friends and family to meet each other, you could do a big group meeting, but that should not be the initial way that you introduce people um, to you or you to them. So start individually and then you could make it, I mean, you could eventually have like 16 little boxes on the screen and be like, hi, I'm aunt so-and-so and I'm uncle Frankie. And, oh, you know, so cute. 
<laughs> with your family party. And, yeah, and if you're doing that, you should totally hit record because you are going to want that video footage to make an adorable addition to your wedding album. Love that. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, quick reminder, we will shoot you the replay of this tomorrow or no, what's today? I can't keep track. We're Wednesday. We're Wednesday. We will work on getting this to you um, tomorrow, but at the latest by Sunday. Um, and I'll also send a link for any past webinars because a lot of questions that came up were already addressed and either way, definitely worth listening to. Um, and again, if you are single, in a relationship for at least one month, have never worked with Eliza and want some clarity, reach out. Um, to everyone, you should just know that you are not recorded. Um, I mean, this conversation was recorded, but we don't see any other people. So nothing to worry about. You just see me and Eliza. Yeah. And I would love to meet any of you virtually um, and have a 15 minute interview to see if I'm a fit for your needs. A lot of people right now have said, I've got so much more time on my hands. You know what? I think I'm ready to work with a coach and just try something different. You should just know majority of the people that I work with, I work with them on a short term basis. It could be a month or two months or three months. It's not like this is like an investment of six months to a year to actually get something to happen. I like to create a shift in dating and relationships within a very quick time period, whether you're in one or you're trying to get in one or you're trying to get out of one. It doesn't matter what uh, situation you're in, but I work with people individually and I love the work that I do. I'm very passionate about it. And I have, and I have she also happens to be good at it. I, it does happen also that the people that I work with, like Sarah, I end up marrying them off and then they become too busy with their own personal life to keep working with me. I but am not true. too busy for you. No, it's not true. And my editor who edited my book, um, helped her to get married. And then she started, I also helped her to start her whole business. I'm like, I'll be your first client, you know, like, let's just get this thing going. And now she edits books and has her own business, which is amazing. If you need that info, you can always reach out. But, but just so you know, Aliza did tell me people who hang around me tend to get married. So if you want to get married, hang around me. I think you actually said that to me right before we started, like right before I met my fiance and when you were trying to convince me to work with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting it here. Um, why did I, why did I say that to her? I, I, I noticed that people, listen, I hyper focus on dating and relationships and love and this whole topic. I am deeply passionate about it. It's what I think about all day long. My kids will tell you, <laughs> like, what does Ima do? She helps people get married and fall in love. <laughs> yeah, they're very cute. If you ask them, they're like, well, what does she do? And they're like, I don't know. She like, she helps people, you know, find people and love people and make families. Aww. So it's what I absolutely love, love, love to do. And I notice that the people that I hang around with, they all get married. And the reason that I notice it is because when they're single, they usually have so much time to talk to me. And then they get married and they're so busy. I have some past clients who, you know, we became friends because we became so close through the process. And I'm like, I never hear from you. They're like, yeah, you got me married. And like, sorry, two kids later, I'm done. I have no time for you. And I was like, Lisa, I love you and I want you to keep going all night, but I think you have a client in like seven minutes. Okay. Goodbye. I love you. <laughs> Good night, everyone. All the best. Bye.